This is ridiculous. And this is a refutation to Brother Daniel who tried to take a swipe that supposedly debates are beneficial because a person almost became a Muslim. La ya Habibi, la Habibi, we're not noobs over here, nor are we boomers. If we're going to go tit for tat, Habibi. As Allah says, all these arguments and all this nonsense, and then, then, then this whole campaign of du'at, who, whose whole da'wah is, 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 is philosophy. Everything is philosophy. Yes, Sheikh, you get a headache from the amount of information going back and forth. Allah Azza wa Jal refuted all of these people because we already know we have the Quran. And believe me, if the Quran is not good enough for them, wallahi, there's no goodness in them. Like, what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is what we've been saying for a long time. This is one of the strongest evidences against using ilmul kalam, i.e. philosophy, even though in modern days the term philosophy is more encompassing. Nevertheless, the element of philosophy, meaning if we were to subtract from philosophy reasoning, common sense and reasoning, which we all agree can, we can use. It's used in the Quran, it's used in the Sunnah. There's absolutely no harm in using reasoning and common sense to arrive at a particular point. Let's subtract that from philosophy. Everything else now that is of philosophical nature, this ayah is an evidence that you will never ever need anything outside of the Quran and the Sunnah to deliver the truth to the people because Allah Azza wa Jal says they will not bring forward any argument except illa jinaka who who did the jinaka who brought it forward Allah Azza wa Jal when already it's already done in the Quran illa jinaka bil haqqi except that we will bring you the truth wa ahsana tafsira and a better explanation meaning the Quran is a better explanation the sunnah of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam has a better explanation than any philosophical paradigm from which you operate. Any argument of philosophical nature from Aristotle and their likes, anything which is adopted from outside the Quran and the Sunnah is not needed and is deviance and should not be used to make da'wah. And some people have a misconception. Some people have a misconception. They, they make a debate, they debate with some, some deviant person and then a person leaves in the comment, uh, oh, oh, you know, I am about to become a Muslim. I'm about to give the shahada. Thank you so much. And then they say, see, this is, well, you know, you say, what is the benefit of debating? What is the benefit of debating? Like basically because a person left a comment that they might embrace Islam. This justifies all the harm that comes from these loser debates. Hello, anybody up here? Are you kidding me? I give you a, a number of answers. Number one, in Islam, we have the concept of manafi' and mafasid. Masalih and mafasid. Manafi' and darar. There's the benefit and the harm. There's the advantage and disadvantage. Allah told, told us, يَسْأَلُونَكَ عَنِ الْخَمِّرِ وَالْمَيْسِرِ They ask you concerning wine and gambling. قُلْ فِيهِمَا إِثْمٌ كَبِيرٌ Say in them, there, there's a great sin. وَمَنَافِعُ لِلنَّاسِ And there's also benefit for the people. Then Allah said, وَإِثْمُهُمَا أَكْبَرُ مِنْ نَفْعِهِمَا But, but their, their uh, harm exceeds, is greater than their benefit. Their sin is greater than the benefit. Therefore, Allah Azza wa Jal made it haram. Allah made gambling and alcohol and wine haram. Even though Allah said that there's manafi' للناس, there's goodness in them. So yes, yes, possibly, some lost soul might find Islam through a debate that does not justify nor does it make it beneficial to continue to engage in these debates. Number one, Habibi. Number two, Habibi. Do you know that some people embrace Islam because of a bunch of Sufis dancing in the masjid? Are you aware that some people heard a nasheed and then they became Muslim? Are you going to say now that singing nasheed is the ultimate methodology and the right way to give da'wah to Islam? Because I could find you people that became Muslim because of an nasheed that they heard. What are you trying to say? What are you trying to say? Because a person, <laughs> this is assuming that this person is genuine. This is an anonymous person, yeah, Captain. 
This is an anonymous person. This could be anybody. This could be a fake account. It could be a real account. The person didn't even embrace Islam. He said he might give the shahada. He, he might not also. And assuming he does, let's say he goes all the way. It doesn't cut it. Those debates remain to be harmful. They remain to bring about calamities. They remain to cast doubt into the minds and the hearts of the Muslims. And they give publicity. And they give free exposure to deviant people that deserve to be thrown in the dumpster. People that belong in the dumpster, you're taking, out, you're taking them out of the dumpster and putting them on a platform with thousands of viewers and saying, here, look at this trash. Check out this trash. Mm, look how much it stinks. Oh, look how disgusting it looks. Oh, but let me prove to you that this trash is trash. And then you celebrate to yourself that you defeated the trash. Habibi, Anta, you pulled the trash out of the dumpster in the first place. Khalla trash, khalla trash in the dumpster. And put some flowers and show us something that is pleasant in the first place. This is ridiculous. And this is a refutation to Brother Daniel who tried to take a swipe that supposedly debates are beneficial because a person almost became a Muslim. La ya Habibi, la Habibi, we're not noobs over here, nor are we boomers. We've been in this longer than you, uh, you have been and we know what we're talking about. If we're going to go tit for tat, Habibi. As Allah says, all these arguments and all this nonsense and then this whole campaign of du'at who, whose whole da'wah is, 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 is philosophy. Everything is philosophy. Yes, yeah, Sheikh, you get a headache from the amount of information going back and forth. Allah Azza wa Jal refuted all of these people because we already know we have the Quran. And believe me, if the Quran is not good enough for them, wallahi, there's no goodness in them. Wallahi, if the Quran is not good enough for them, wallahi, there's no goodness in them. If the book of Allah doesn't guide them, then may nothing guide them. If the book of Allah is not enough guidance for them, the one whom Allah Azza wa Jal says about ذلك الكتاب ولا ريب فيه That book in which there is no doubt. إن هذا القرآن يهدي للتي هي أقوم Verily this Quran will guide you to that which is more straight. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? You're going to set aside the book of Allah and talk about, you know, contingency argument to whatever the air should this thing started and that thing started and uh, the world and re all. Yani, wallah. And I'm not, I'm not ashamed to say that I'm not familiar with this terminology because that's not your role as a da'i. Your role as a da'i is to know how to cite an ayah from the book of Allah. Your, your role is to know how to cite a hadith from the Prophet ﷺ, not to read the books of philosophy so you can come and give us another philosophical presentation. Anytime someone tells you, brother, but yeah, wallah, there's no harm, say there, no, there is a harm. Allah says in the Quran, wala yatunaka bi mathalin illa jinaka bil haq. The haq is in the book of Allah and jinaka is already done, meaning it's already been delivered to the Prophet ﷺ and ended. So all of these deviant Ash'aris and Maturidis and Jahmites and uh, uh, Ash'arites and the Shia and all of these deviant people, they did not apply this ayah. And they brought about some, some nonsense and some deviance. And they thought that the Quran was not enough. That's why they continued to try to get something from their mind. That we're being warned. The Prophet ﷺ said, when you see those people that select Al-Mutashabih, it is those whom Allah has named, meaning those are the ones whom Allah was speaking about. فَحْذَرُوهُمْ So be wary of them. You know someone who's going to leave alone the haqq, which is, which is irrefutable, undebatable, not open for interpretation, not open for opinions. It's the haqq from Allah Azza wa It's black and white. You see someone leave that off and go to some uh, hadith somewhere, some ayah somewhere, something mutashabih, and they've already absorbed this mentality. And then you give them a platform so that they can share this with the people when Allah is telling, when Prophet is telling you, فَحْذَرُوهُمْ Be wary of them. Do you, do you bring a thief into your house and so you can protect yourself from the robbery of the thief? You don't, you don't, you don't give them any room, you don't give them any chance to speak. You close all the doors in their face. They are dying, they are dying to voice their opinions. They are dying to cause mischief. And you're basically saying, here, look, I want to defeat you in the debate, tafaddal, and you bring them on, and you eat chips and grapes and, and potatoes during the debate, and you act uh, inappropriately, and then we scream at the end that, mashallah, tabarakallah, intasar al-haqq, and the Muslims are this and the Muslims are that. While we, in reality, we haven't given da'wah to Islam, we've, we've confused the, the younger generation who are now not interested in acquiring knowledge. Now, then, then at home, their, their, main, their main thing is 
looking from one debate to another and absorbing this information on, on, on regular basis, on daily basis, on weekly basis. I have more to say, but I don't want to hold the mic for too long. Tfaddal, Ustadi. Thanks for watching this video. Subscribe and click on the notification bell. Like, comment, and share with friends and family.